Good day everyone. Welcome to Eye Acupuncture Episode 2 presented by Lamp AcuWellness Foundation Inc. Diagnosis of disease by observation of the eye. Before discussing the eyes as a diagnostic tool, it is important to state that it is the Chinese medicine version of eye diagnosis that should be utilized in a Chinese medicine diagnosis. Whilst iris diagnosis is an effective and precise diagnostic tool, it should not be used as part of a Chinese medicine diagnosis. This is because iris diagnosis is based on the Western medicine anatomical and physiological model. This means an observation of an imbalance in the kidneys, for example, in uh, iris diagnosis does not necessarily mean that the kidneys, as understood in Chinese medicine, have an imbalance and need treatment. Conversely, one can imagine a situation in which there is an obvious pattern of kidney yin deficiency or kidney yang deficiency without this manifesting as a problem in the person's physical kidneys. And therefore, this will not register with changes in the iris. It is important to keep the diagnostic tools from different physiological and pathological systems separate. Otherwise, there is a risk of formulating a treatment principle based on a false premise. There are many different aspects and levels to ophthalmic diagnosis. Most of us have taken advantage of some of these even before we started learning and practicing Chinese medicine. Chinese medicine has just taught us to focus our attention on these signals and systematize the information that they give us. The eye is the gathering place of essence qi, jing qi, from the five zang and six fu organs. The Divine Pivot, Chapter 80, says, The essence from the five zang and six fu flows upwards to irrigate the eyes. The heart houses the spirit and the capability to identify and visually distinguish items depends on the normal activities of the spirit. The heart is also the organ that governs the blood. It is the heart chi that provides the power to maintain normal blood circulation, which supplies nourishment to the eye. The eyes are the orifice of the liver. The function of the liver is to store the blood and control the sinews to maintain the eye's normal vision and movement. Blood is the nutritive resource for the eyes. Therefore, the spleen's function of generating blood and the kidney's function of storing essence are directly related to the normal functioning of the eyes. The dispersing and descending function of the lung maintains smooth qi circulation, which provides the power to maintain blood circulation. Because of this, the lung is also indirectly related to the eyes. One of the first things we determine, both consciously and subconsciously, on meeting a person is how much vitality and radiance there is in their eyes. From a Chinese medicine perspective, this will inform us about the person's shen. In the same way that we say that the eyes are the windows of the soul, Chinese medicine states that shen can be observed in a person's eyes. There are two definitions of shen that are relevant here. Shen meaning vitality and radiance, and shen meaning spirit, mind, consciousness. A person who is in good health will have eyes that are bright and sparkling. It is possible to have direct eye contact with them and this will feel comfortable for both persons. A person with heart chi deficiency will have difficulty maintaining or feel uncomfortable with direct eye contact. This is because their shen is undernourished and they are therefore often very shy. 
Direct eye contact can feel too intense for them. It can also seem as if there is just too little sparkle in their eyes. It can remind you of the eyes of a person who is exhausted. The Shen is simply not shining brightly enough. It can also be difficult to have eye contact with a person who has heart and liver chi stagnation due to the lack of movement of their Hun and Shen. The difference between this and the former situation is that a person with heart chi deficiency will have a tendency to look away and they will lower their gaze when you look directly into their eyes. In a person with heart and liver chi stagnation, it will seem as if they are staring inwards, are unable to look outwards, and are locked within themselves. This is reflective of their mental condition. Their hun, which normally looks forwards and outwards, is inhibited in its movement by the stagnation, and the person can have difficulty in seeing a future for themselves. An overactive liver can in turn result in a person having very intense, rigid staring eyes. They stare at you and instinctively you want to look away from them because their gaze is too intense and piercing. In this case, the Hun is overactive. It is very focused on a goal or its own individual vision of the future. This type of person is used to being in control and getting their own way. When heat agitates the Shen, it becomes restless, and the person can be manic. Their eyes will become restless and frenetic. This is because Hun follows Shen in its entering and exiting. When Shen is agitated and thereby overactive, Hun is forced to follow its movements. This results in eyes that are constantly shifting their point of focus in the room. When Chen is obscured and blocked by phlegm, it can have difficulty radiating outwards, thereby creating a barrier in making contact with other people's Chen. The eyes will appear matte and blurry. The person will often have the feeling that they are not fully present and in touch with the outside world. It is as if they are sitting in a bell jar or there is a mist between their eyes and the outside world. To summarize, when one lacks eye contact, it could mean heart chi deficiency. Staring and piercing eyes would mean liver excess imbalances. Darting or restless eyes, heat agitating the shen, blurry or matte eyes, phlegm blocking the shen, and lack of brightness, liver and heart chi stagnation, heart chi deficiency. The eyes can be divided into different zones, as with the ears, feet, and other parts of the body. When there are color changes in these areas of the eye, this can tell us something about the corresponding Zhangfu organ. It is important to remember, though, that the condition of other organs may also affect these areas. A condition of heat, even though it is not in the lung, will make the sclera in the eye redden and become bloodshot. Heat's yang nature means that it will always rise upwards and therefore all forms of heat in the body can affect the sclera of the eyes. Various imbalances can affect the eyes. Although the eyes, when taken as a whole, relate to the liver, the colors in the eyes can be affected by other organs and by xie shi. Heat, especially excess heat, will make the eyes red. Heat is yang in nature and therefore rises upwards. Systemic heat, unless it is bound together with dampness, will always rise up to the upper part of the body and to the head. 
This is why it is most often the head and not the lower part of the body that manifests symptoms and signs of heat. Heat manifesting with a redness of the eyes will often have its root in liver fire, stomach fire, or an invasion of exogenous wind heat. The heat can be so intense that it affects the fluids in the eye. This will result in dryness as the body fluids evaporate from the area or in an inflammation when the heat is so intense that it becomes toxic heat. Yellowish eyes result from conditions of damp heat. Blood deficiency and blood stagnation can also cause the eye to turn yellowish. Less common but still of relevance are the colors green and blue. A bluish tinge to the eyes may be a sign of cold and greenish tinge may indicate liver wind. Inflammation and styes in the eye have two main root causes. They can result from an invasion of wind heat or when heat that has been generated internally rises up to the eye. Often, the heat will have ascended from the stomach via its channel connection to the eyelid. The heat can damage the fluids and be so intense that it generates toxic heat. In theory, sleep and secretions of mucus in the eyes can be observed by the therapist, although this is not usually the case in practice because the person will often have removed it before you meet them. This means it is best to ask the patient about it instead. In the same way that phlegm can accumulate in the lung or in the respiratory passages, it can also accumulate in the corners of the eyes. This is because the corner of the eye is a cavity in which there is a limited flow of chi. Fluids can stagnate in this cavity and turn into phlegm. This can be seen in the morning after the eyelids have been closed for several hours, resulting in a lack of movement of chi in this area. A person with a tendency to have phlegm may often experience small blobs of mucus in the eyes forming throughout the day. Watering eyes can be due to the circulation of fluids in the area being disturbed by exogenous pathogenic factor or a liver imbalance causing the movement of fluids in the eyes to become chaotic. Liver imbalances that lead to the eyes watering can be both deficient and excess in nature. The tears may be spontaneous but they will often arise when the eyes are exposed to wind or droughts. This is consistent with the fact that the liver, wind, the eyes, and tears are all aspects of the wood phase in Chinese medicine. The area around the eyes includes both the eyelids and the area just below the eyes. Visible changes in the color of the skin and in the moistness of these areas may be observed. Attention should also be paid to the presence of edema or puffiness in the area around the eyes. The colors most often observed in this area are black, green, blue-green, yellow, red, and white. Changes in skin color will most often be fairly subtle, often only a slight tinge. Blackness of the skin around the eyes usually indicates a kidney imbalance. The color in this case must be seen in relation to the moistness of the skin in the area. If the skin is black and moist, then this can be a sign of kidney yang deficiency. There may well also be puffiness as a result of a slight edema in the area. This will be due to the inability of the kidneys to transport body fluids away from the area. If the skin is dry, there may be kidney indeficiency. A black color can be easily confused with the blue-green color. Therefore, you should as always compare this characteristic with the other signs and symptoms. A dark dusky color around the eyes can also arise when phlegm or dampness 
block the movement of qi and blood in the fine network of vessels in this area. Blue-green and green around the eyes is usually a sign of liver qi stagnation. The difference between these two colors is an indicator of the degree of the liver qi stagnation that exists. Liver qi stagnation can result in blood not circulating in the fine network of vessels as it should. Because the skin around the eyes is very thin and almost transparent, it will be easier to see the stagnation of blood here than in other areas of the body. The stronger the qi stagnation, the more blood will stagnate. The blue-green color indicates a stronger stagnation of qi than the green color does. A purple color indicates blood stagnation. Redness around the eyes is a sign of heat, generally blood heat. The redness can also be a sign of damp heat. In this case, the skin will often weep or flake as is seen in fungal infections of the skin. Whiteness can be shiny, pale, or pallid. A shiny whiteness around the eyes can be seen in an invasion of wind cold. Pale or pallid skin around the eyes is a sign of blood deficiency. The sallow complexion here can almost be yellowish. As is the case with the lips and the face in general, the use of makeup can negate the diagnostic observation of these areas. The colors around the eyes, black and dry, means kidney in deficiency, black and moist, kidney yang deficiency, dark brown, dusky, phlegm or dampness, blue-green or green, liver chi stagnation, redness, heat, white and shining, cold, white, dry and sallow, blood deficiency, purple, blood stagnation. The area around the eyes may be swollen and puffy due to the presence of accumulated fluids. In chronic cases, it may result in bags under the eyes. If the condition is acute, this will usually be due to an invasion of wind cold or wind heat. This pathogenic factor can disturb the lung's ability to spread and distribute the thin fluids. So, these then accumulate in the lung. At the same time, the pathogenic factor will block the lung in its function of sending qi downwards. Lung qi can then become rebellious and rise upwards. The rebellious qi will carry the accumulated fluids upwards with it, resulting in puffiness in the face, especially in the area around the eyes where the flesh is very thin. If the puffiness is a chronic condition, it will probably be a manifestation of spleen or kidney yang deficiency. Spleen and kidney yang are responsible for transporting and transforming fluids. If there is yang deficiency in either of these organs, there will be an accumulation of fluids. The result will then be bags below the eyes. As it is a deficiency condition, the bags will be more noticeable and pronounced when the person is tired or has overstrained themselves. According to the inner canon of the Yellow Emperor, the essence of the five Zhang and six Fu organs all ascend to the eyes, which can reveal the health status of the Zhang Fu organs. This is indicative of the close relationship of the eyes with the Zhangfu organs, muscle and bone meridians, spirit, and qi and blood. The reason the eyes can see everything and differentiate colors is that they are nourished by the essence of the Zhang and Fu organs. The disharmony of Zhangfu organs and meridians and collaterals are often reflected in the eyes, even leading to some eye diseases. 
Conversely, eye diseases can also affect the connected internal organs through meridians and collaterals, even causing a general malaise throughout the body. By observing the eyes, we can not only diagnose eye diseases, but also changes in the internal organs, thereby arriving at diagnosis of other diseases. Given the close relationship of the eyes with the five Zang organs, and based on the relationship between the eyes and the meridians, the eyes are divided into different parts with regards to the related meridians to show how a particular part of the eye reflects a certain internal organ. Foot Shao Yang arises from the outer canthus. Foot Tai Yang arises from the inner canthus. And Foot Yang Ming originates lateral to the Ala Nasi, large intestine 21, ascends to inner canthus, meets bladder channel at bladder 1. The channels that terminate at the eyes are Han Shao Yang. A branch emerges anterior to the ear and reaches the outer canthus to link with the gallbladder channel. Han Tai Yang. A branch reaches the inner canthus to link with the bladder channel. A branch passes through the outer canthus to enter the ear. Foot Yang Ming. Divergent channel of the stomach runs upward lateral to the nose and connects with the eye before joining the stomach channel. Renmai curves around the lips, passes through the cheek, and enters the infraorbital region. Yang Chao channel ascends along the neck to the corner of the mouth from which it then enters the inner canthus. Yin Chao channel from the zygoma, it reaches the inner canthus and communicates with the Yang Chao channel. The channels that pass through the eye region are Han Chao Yin, ascending portion of the heart system, runs alongside the esophagus to connect with the eye system. Foot drain ascends along the posterior aspect of the throat to the nasopharynx and connects with the eye system. The channels that uh, pass through the musculotendon meridian, we have Han Chao Yang. Musculotendon meridian joins with the foot Tai Yang to form a muscular net around the eye. Foot Yang Ming. The musculotendon meridian joins with the foot tai yang to form a muscular net around the eye. Looking straight ahead, draw an imaginary straight line connecting the centers of the pupils and then extend it through the medial and lateral canthi. Then draw another straight line vertically through the centers of the pupils and extend it beyond the upper and lower eye sockets. In this way, the eye is divided into four parts. Then divide each part further into two equal zones, that is, four quarters and eight identical areas. These eight identical areas are the eight zones, each corresponding to a specific internal organ. Changes in the color of the eyes are reflective of a person's state of health. By inspecting the color of both eyes and blood streaks in the eyes, a doctor can determine whether there are pathogenic developments with the connected organs. The parts of the eye that are easier to observe include the white of the eye and the iris or the block. A clean bluish white is considered the normal color of the white. If abnormalities occur in the white, for example, the color turns red, yellow, or has some color spots, this signals problems with your health. If there is a black spot on the iris, you should pay attention to it. 
If the eyes and your body all look yellowish, it means there is damp heat in your body. If the body appears yellow, accompanied by low spirits and fatigue, you are most likely experiencing a deficiency of both spleen and blood. If the whites look red, accompanied by severe chills and feverish sensations, it means there is heat in the body. If the eyes look red and burn, it indicates that you may be infected with a virus. Blood patches in the whites are a sign of cerebral arteriosclerosis. If there are small red dots in the whites, you should watch out for the possible onset of diabetes. When black dots of various sizes appear in the heart zone of the eyes, it suggests the risk of coronary heart disease, myocardial infarction, or heart disease. Redness in the whites with a tinge of black. This is most often seen in conditions such as a long-time disease that has been treated but never cured, indicating that the pathogen has gone deep in the body and been transformed into a heat, causing blood stagnation and blood stasis inside the body. The ailment tends to last a long time and is accompanied by severe blood stasis. In addition to diagnosis through observing the color of the eyes, the changes in the physical forms can also be used as criteria for diagnosis. If other abnormalities occur in the eyes, you should address them. Observing the form of the eyes aims to determine whether the overall physical form of the eyes is normal. If abnormality appears, for example, abnormally tearing up, puffiness of the eyelids, or abnormalities in the pupils, it may suggest that there is a problem with your health. Abnormally watery eyes is a manifestation of insufficient liver blood. A deficient cold of liver meridian and deficiency of both liver and kidneys may all result in watery eyes. If one pupil is smaller than the other, or one pupil retracts at a slower rate or at a smaller scale, the person may be suffering from cerebral apoplexy. If both eyes are exotropic, it may indicate cancer or carbon monoxide poisoning. If only one eye is exotropic, it might signal diabetes. Puffiness of the eyelids. Abnormal metabolism of the kidney and uh, stomach and intestines may lead to water retention in the body, leading to puffiness of the eyelids. Fat granules on the eyelids or around the eyes may indicate that your cholesterol level is too high. Thank you very much for your attention and see you in our next videos.